I'm gonna show you five things in this video that'll help you be a better fisher person off of the beach when fly fishing either saltwater or freshwater. So it's super important to start off with the right fly line. The right fly line will make your life so much easier. The next is a casting technique that you're gonna to wanna to use when fly fishing beaches. You'll wanna learn how to cast this way. Next, we're gonna talk about six weight fly rods. And finally, we're gonna talk about saltwater flies specifically for sea run cutthroat. Hey guys, thanks for tuning in to another episode of Fly Fish Dan. Today, we're gonna to talk about sea run cutthroat. These are coastal cutthroat. You can really only find them in one place in the world, and that is on the western side of North America. And they have a very healthy population here in the Puget Sound. It's a challenging fishery, but it can be a rewarding fishery. So I'm over here at the Puget Sound Fly Company, and I'm gonna to talk to Anil about setting me up with everything I need to start doing some sea run cutthroat fishing. So thanks for joining me, and let's get inside the fly shop. Let's start with the fly line. Okay, cool. Um, you mentioned you were interested in a floater in particular, right? And that's the one that'll give you the most versatility. A lot of guys will do clear intermediates, uh, but if you want the most versatility, the floater gives you the best of both worlds. You can do top water stuff as well. This is our most popular. It's one of my favorites. Uh, it's an integrated shooting headline. It's very aggressive. The photo on the front kind of tells it. It's not about presentation. It's not about accuracy or delicacy or much other than maximum distance in a limited amount of space and a lot of wind often too. So it does that very well. There are other options. This is our most popular and my personal favorite. Um, and then, you know, it segues right into, had we been talking about one of these clear intermediates, we could have done a, a, sh a relatively short leader, but because we have a floater, we're gonna wanna do a little bit longer leader. And because we are asking this leader to th throw a pretty big fly, we're usually doing two X or one X, something that's fairly stout that can turn over these bigger flies in the wind, particularly on the top, the cutthroat arm are very leader shot. So what is this? This is the item you never knew you needed and never wanted. <laughs> this is a stripping basket. Um, this is my favorite one. For some reason, the epicenter of stripping basket technology is in Denmark. They're all made or designed in Denmark. This one is no exception. Good catch. Um, I like this one for a few reasons, not the least of which this is my permanent wading belt because it's a Velcro attachment. Oh, that's sick. Um, it's a little bit, if you've ever owned a boat and a trailer or anything with a trailer, it's a little like a trailer hitch. You will bash your hand on your stripping basket when you haul or do a variety of things. And if you have an old school plastic one, again, it's like shinning your, your uh, trailer hitch. Uh, these help protect me from myself. Um, and then the last thing I like about it is it's kind of hard to mess up any of the enclosed basket designs. If you miss with a strip and your loop leaves the basket, it'll tangle almost every time. This one's really, and we'll show you outside, you can kind of just toss your loops. They can flop in and out of the basket and with a few, very few exceptions, it'll shoot right out of the all right dan so we got our uh, basket on here most people wear it like i am now which is i'm a right-handed caster it's slightly on my left hip and below my waist it allows a pretty natural stripping motion but like i said one of the things i like about this basket is even if you have some loops that are kind of flopping out it doesn't seem to hurt anything so you really do a fairly natural stripping motion. I get it to the back of the shooting head, which is this beautiful olive color and transitioning into white. I grab it there. When I'm on the water, I'm gonna make one roll cast to get the head outside of the guides. Ideally then, so that I'm not spending a lot of time casting and throwing my line behind me into the rocks and the bushes, I'm gonna do one back cast and then shoot a bunch of line. Wow, just like that. Not one little tangle, even though you had some spilling over, wasn't a problem at all. 
So again, I'll show that in real time, one time. Getting to the back of the head, it's nearing the tip of the rod, I'm stripping. And now I can feel it getting thicker. I'm at the back of the shooting head. I do my roll cast to shoot it out, one back cast, and I launch the rest. Nice. Nicely done. Um, we're gonna talk about some fly, single hand rods for fishing off the beach. You can actually start out a little bit less expensive, but just to keep some brevity to this presentation, we started out at about $180 with this Echo Ion. Longer rods are popular on the beach, more so than they are in other places perhaps. It does give you some advantage by keeping that line up off the beach a little bit better. It does give you some disadvantage. It's a little bit harder to cast them in the wind and it can feel they're a lot heavier in the hand. So certainly there's some debate, but nine and a half and even 10 foot rods have some popularity on the beach. Um, so that segues right into the, one of my favorite less expensive rods for the beach, uh, ironically called the Echo Trout Rod, but we love it. It's a fast action rod, um, great, easily loading, but super powerful in the butt, shoots line really well. 350 bucks. It's a cool rod too. They come with a removable fighting butt and I've certainly seen yes. this done yes. less well, but you really can't tell if you choose not to have the fighting butt on there, that's your option. And once it's on there, you really, you don't feel it. You don't notice it at all. So I'm a little leery. I've seen that done really badly, but in this case, I think they did an excellent job with it. You'd never know it if you hadn't put it on there yourself. That's a cool feature. And okay. I have that in both the nine and the nine and a half footer. You can kind of cast them for yourself to see. Those are imported rods. I have one more imported rod in the Hardy here. That's a Zane Pro. That's a really light, really fast, cool rod to cast. Um, everything from here on up though is gonna be made domestically. And of course now you you spend a little more money. But the cool thing for us, Dan, is these are made, you know, within miles of here. These are made over on Bainbridge Island. This is a Sage Sonic 650. Here's a Loomis uh, IMX Pro. That's high fives. I don't know exactly, maybe 575 on that one. That's made down in Woodland. Um, also got a Loomis NRX getting a little bit more expensive. That's 895, but great casting rod. Again, made right here in Washington, nine footer or a 10 footer there. So you really have some cool options. I have a, a pretty good beach six weight. I have two of them at $120 too. So you have tons of options. And are you looking more for a fast action rod for this type of fishing? In general you do, but a fast action rod is only helpful if you can load it. So you really want a rod that you can cast and load and fish. So a hot rod is great, but if you can't drive a manual, it doesn't do you any good. Right. That makes sense. So let's talk about a reel. So you were setting me up today with a specific reel. Maybe we can talk about that. Yeah. So I originally brought in a Ross reel. This is a smaller reel, but Anil talked to me about considering getting a different large arbor style reel instead of using this. And I'll let him explain why. He asked me if this reel would work. And the honest answer is it will work. It'll be just fine. You know, like any reel, you're going to want to clean it off in the salt water. But the one thing I wanted you to consider is this is already a small reel for this size rod. But since we will be able to get enough backing, it's not going to be much of an issue. What I wanted you to consider is just how small a coils your line is going to be stored in. And it's likely to be fairly coily. And even though I don't have any line, it's pretty easy to see how this is gonna give you a pretty good advantage in terms right, of how, right. how much memory well, your line's gonna have good. when you pull it off the reel. There's right, remedies to that. We can stretch our line, but it certainly is nicer to start with something that's a little bit. So I, ideally, a large arbor, you're just gonna have a, yeah. 
a better experience yeah, when you're down there cold see, water. I can't get, I, I can, I just don't feel like pulling all the way down to the arbor, but you can imagine how small the arbor is there versus on a, a model. And what was the reel that, uh, that I chose today? This is the, the Lamson. You chose a Lamson Remix. It's a super popular reel. Anodized aluminum frame. Spools press fit on there with a couple of O-rings. The drag is fully sealed. This is a drag they use in almost all of their reels. It's super reliable, very clean and simple, easy to service, very few moving parts. Awesome. Great, and thanks for that recommendation. Yeah. Right, yeah. So now we're going to talk about flies. And Neil's going to show us what flies should be in your box when you're sea run cutthroat fishing. This time of year, little bait fish patterns are really popular. You still have quite a few chum fry out there. So patterns that are barred with par markings, <coughs> little fry patterns, the ubiquitous clouds or minnow. Everyone knows that fly. Even variations on woolly buggers can be really effective. We're moving out of the time of year when the small amphipods and euphosids are important, but they, they're still out there and still viable. And then little clousers in a variety of colors. Again, little bait fish tubes are very popular. And poppers, what, about, what are your thoughts on using poppers? Poppers can be really fun. Uh, it's a really good way to cover the water because you tend to get a lot of reaction to it. Uh, they're difficult to hook up sometimes, but that's not the reason you're doing it. I mean, you certainly can hook and land fish that way, but it's it's the visual aspect of it. It'll take them a couple of swipes and it's fun to watch them try. Cool. All right, so Anil gave us a lot of great options to choose from, and I decided to go with the Sage Foundation six weight. Really because I'm a huge Sage fan, it happens to be temporarily discontinued because of all of the supply chain issues, and I just really like the rod. But those other choices are really great choices if you want to come down to the fly shop to check them out. I also partnered up this rod with the Lamson Remix Reel. Great reel, you can't go wrong with Lamson. Plus it looks great, so I'm super happy to have a full Sea Run Cutthroat setup just to go out there and beach fish. I also picked up the stripping basket. You really want to have one of those, otherwise you're just going to really mess up your line. And some fly line. Let's go hit the beach. It won't be in this video, so you're certainly welcome to take a look at this beach fishing video right here and see if I can get into one of those awesome Sea Run Cutthroat. All right, everybody. Till the next time, fish on.